Jimmy. Oh. Great to have you along. We have got a very, very big show tonight. An unpredictable Ooh. show, Jim. I think yes. things are going to happen tonight. No a very big show with news. Yeah. Damien Barrett along. Breaking news about a Collingwood superstar that's going to please the Collingwood fans. Don't go away. This is big news coming up. And also Ross Lyon, who's been, uh, his coaching future has been debated throughout the course of this week. We've got news on that. A little twist that makes things very, very interesting. Also, as everyone would be aware, it's been a sad week in the AFL with the passing of one of the all-time greats of the game, Bob Davis. And we have a big Geelong influence, of course, on the footy show with... Uh, Sam Newman and Bill Brownless, 500 plus games together for the Cats. So we're going to have a good look at the and celebrate the life of the great Bob Davis. Yeah, looking forward to that indeed. Uh, also, I'm not sure whether you caught Mick Malthouse's press conference after last week's yes. game. He spoke about a bit of bread. What was that? Really weird ass sort of stuff from mm, Mick. No was. one understood where he was coming oh. from. So we sent our man Sam Newman, who fronted him on one of his walks in the uh, Fitzroy Gardens. What, with the Foss was on a walk himself? Or? Very, very early in the wow. morning and just got him to explain exactly where he's coming from. I'm not sure it makes it any clearer, but it's Mick Mouldhouse like you've never seen him before. A lot of fun. All right, now we like the biggest names uh, mm. to be on this show, Gary. And tonight we've got two of the biggest. Yeah. Six world champion Ooh. title belts between them. Our man, Danny Green, is going to be here mm. and he's fighting Antonio Carter. Antonio Carver's a four-time world champ and, of course, Rocky fans will remember him from the last Rocky uh, yes. movie. Rocky Balboa. These, these two don't get on, Gary. No. They don't get on for a start and they're getting it on in July in Sydney, so mm. it'll be interesting to see the body language between those two and mm. they don't like a person who works for us. Exactly right. I see a boxing ring over there. I'm not sure what it's all about, but backstage has been the very, tension. very tense. It has. And it's going to be a blue. Greeny's been pacing around. Now he wants someone He does. Better. And I'm going to encourage him or his mate to punch the suitcase out of this bloke. Might not be who you think, but that's coming up. Shane Crawford, in the absence of Sam, who was busy this week, has been out another street talk at yes. St Kilda. That's an absolute beauty. It is a massive show tonight. Don't go away. Let's get it started. A little different off the top for reasons that Jim has already spoken about. The passing of an absolute legend this week in Bob Davis. And uh, to join us, as Jim so eloquently put, we're going to celebrate the life of a great football man. Please welcome John Newman and Billy Brownless. Thank you very much. Now, boys... Uh you're in a terrific position to be able to sit back and talk and celebrate the life of Bobby Sam because uh, you played under him and he recruited you, of course. Yeah. And Billy, your involvement with Geelong over a long period of time, you've seen Bobby sit back. He's no more revered figure down there at the, the Cattery. No, but, no more revered. And it is a sort of a sad week, but it's a sort of a uh, celebration, really, of uh, a great man, Bob. I know it's easy to say that about people when they're gone. But there'd be very few, there'd be no one, he's a bit like this man, there'd be no one in Australia that wouldn't like Bob and uh, we'll kind of pay a bit of homage, pay homage yep. to him tonight, so if you can just bear with us, a bit indulgent mm. from uh, the Geelong boys. But... No, it isn't at all, Sam, I, I think it's appropriate and, and Bill, we had a chat during the week about it with regard to Bob's relationship with Sam and, and Sam loves Bob, Yep. Uh, but... Bob loved Sam too. Yeah. You, it was very clear. It's not it? many that really, really love <laughs> Sam, but Bob did. And uh, he's a very placid man. Well, well, he was a placid man. Anger and temper weren't in Bob's characteristics, mm. but I'm just going to tell this, uh, this anecdote of Bob. This is true. Mm. Uh, Bob <laughs> was the coach of Geelong, and I think it was about the middle of 1965 and we didn't get beaten very often under Bob but we were getting a belting this time <laughs> this time down at Caninia Park and half time he came in and we had a chairman of selectors in those days called Tom Morrow who was a big strong disciplinarian and a very fine man Tom and he was the chairman of selectors and uh, the crowd used to come in at to the rooms at half time and uh, general public, general mm. world of supporters, yeah. and they used to stand behind <laughs> sort of from guardrails. And <laughs> Bob had said to Tom, he said, "Don't let him in uh, half time this time, uh, Bo uh, Tom." And Tom said, "Right, Bob." And he's holding <laughs> the door back, and you can hear people banging on the door. And he's got us 
sitting down. It was like looking at saplings in a forest. He's <laughs> starting to address us. And he said, some of you are not putting in. And you can hear this in the background and Tom's holding it back and Tom's yelling out, name them, Bob. <laughs> and this was disconcerting, Bob. And he turned around and he said, and I'm telling you what, he said, there'll be a few people taken off the... <laughs> name them, Bob. <laughs> He said, and I'll tell you another thing, he said, a few of you think you're safe in this side. He said, but next week I'll be dropping a couple of you. <laughs> Name them. This had got to Bobby's turn. He said, will you fair dinkum shut up, Tommy? <laughs> driving me fair dinkum ratty. Uh, from, we got flogged by about 20 goals. Uh, Tom, eventually they broke the door down and pushed Tom over and Bob just walked out the back. Uh, never lost his temper, but he was a uh, just a, a fine man. What, what, what sort of player was he? Because um, we hear so much about his post-footy career and his coaching career, but what sort of footy player was he? Well, he was a great player. He was in the Geelong team of the century. He was, half um, forward flank. Not sure why you'd get into that if you weren't a good player, yeah. Gary. 189 <laughs> games, ga uh, Gaz. Yep. Captain, quick. quick. Two premierships, of course, in 51, 52, and those boys still meet up down at the club. What, what about of the from video a, of a modern day uh, perspective? Is there any player that you'd liken him to? What, what, well, uh, Mike Sheehan uh, uh, likened him to. Um, um, <laughs> likened him to the what, man from uh, the club? from the Adelaide Crows. Dangerfield. Uh, no. Rusciuto. Rusci Mark, sorry, Mark. Uh, uh, yep. He likened him to yep. Mark Rusciuto. Yep. I would liken him perhaps not quite in the same ilk, but to the captain of Carlton. He was uh, just yeah. that sort of player. Um, he was. Uh, he, he got a lot better when he stopped, uh, according to Bob. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, he used no to embellish his career, but he was a fine player and called the Geelong Flyer quick, talented, skillful, and a played pretty. ethically. Premiership coach to Foss in 1963, and I think we've got uh, have some vision here. But tell us, Bill, oh. what happened around this game, because well, it's quite extraordinary. This is in the rooms, the piano accordion <laughs> man. This is Bob. Here's, have a look at that. That's Fred Wooler. That's John Devine, the vice-captain. And that is Happy Hammond. Yeah. <laughs> this is grand final day, 1963. Yeah. And, oh, no. And look. Alistair and Stuart Come on. Happy Hannon was a, a third Happy man. Happy Hammond. In, yeah. Fred Wooler, captain. John Devine, second out. And then Happy Hammond. And look. the Lord Twins out that, to that, third and fourth. Gary, that would be like <laughs> Melbourne playing in a grand final in 2012 yeah. and Wilbur Wilde running <laughs> out. Exactly. Oh, it's, it's, that's what, what, what was the, what was the thing? Behind that. What was well, the he, uh, Happy was playing the uh, piano accordion in the rooms <laughs> yeah. just to add a bit of uh, mood and relaxation. And yeah, yeah, just in the rooms before Any the tune game. in particular? No, or? I'm not sure. <laughs> Might have been, oh, I do like to stroll along the seaside, <laughs> something like that. A uh, sea shanty maybe, uh, Gary? <laughs> oh. And then he became even bigger because um, the forerunner to this show, of course, yeah. and all other shows of this uh, genre was the uh, footy show and league teams, mm -hmm. of which uh, Lou, Jack and Bob, they were all uh, the integral parts in World of Sport, and with which you were a star of as oh, well, Foster. No, I wasn't a star, just a stribbling I was. Uh, but uh, they used to come in unprepared, used to do no preparation at all and just speak off the top yeah. of it, a bit like us. Uh, this is uh, the late Jack Dye and, of course, Lou, the last one of them left, and there's Bob in the middle. And... Uh, <laughs> Big bag. Oh. <laughs> they used to speak about everything except league, football or the teams. And there's Jack. Look at Jack. Yeah. He looks like a porn star. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Well, look at Sam. Look at the Foss. Oh, like the Foss. Oh, no. oh, there he is. <laughs> Have a look at you, John. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Uh, and he remained, he, uh, Billy, he remained yeah. um, terrifically uh, loyal, obviously, to the John Footy Club, but became a great uh, uh, figure down at the rooms in recent times. He'd come and watch training. Uh, loved the Ablett boys, of course. He'd always have some advice to uh, Bomber Thompson, especially, and he, he wore his 63 premiership tie, uh, tie. He loved that and used to wear that around. And he'd always have a few words to say, and he really loved, uh, loved the side. And... Well, he was on the footy show, and now this is only two years ago, boys. Yeah. This is unbelievable. When he came out, this is 2009, Hang grand for... grand final footy show. Here he is here. Have a look at this. <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Yeah, Margaret would have, uh, Margaret, his uh, lovely wife, would have yes. said, Bob, what are you doing? <laughs> but uh, uh, there he is. He came down. I was, was going to say, that's oh, Denver. Yeah. That's actually me. Yeah, I, thought that, I thought that's that was you. Doom, but, uh, but he was just uh, revered Geelong mm. and, uh, and, and drive. I can tell you just one more story about yeah. Bob. Bob uh, 
Bob was the forerunner of that very popular craze called drifting. <laughs> Bob used to borrow um, cars from the Ford Motor Company. He would have borrowed them from Nissan, but they weren't around in those days. Mm. <laughs> and he, uh, he used to borrow the Fairlanes and any new model, he'd come down, he would come down the unsealed road to <laughs> Gardenia Park and he'd put the Fairlane into a handbrake four-wheel drive, a four-wheel skid through sideways through the gates and he'd stop in a in a mist of shale and screenings outside the door <laughs> of the... Uh, and he'd get out of the car, wouldn't lock it, because it wasn't his, and he didn't give a stuff that got pinched. <laughs> and he'd say, that is fair to... To be perfectly truthful, he said, no one could do that any better than me. <laughs> and uh, he was... He, I think he drove... And I should well, just say this, and it's irresponsible mm. now, because in those days there was no spin I think he drove from uh, Geelong to the World of Sport in 23 minutes. Oh, oh, no. um, one of the... Uh, flogged the living... Geelong flog. Tappets out of the uh, fairway. James also mentioned that you were one of his favourites, and we don't yeah. mean this to embarrass you, but he did, was integral in the recruiting of you to the Geelong Footy Club, and we, we particularly like this little grab. I feel that we've got uh, one boy here in particular that will, you know, won't worry about Woods or Bromwell at all. What's his name? A uh, boy called Newman, John Newman. Didn't he play with the seconds last year? Yes, yeah, he played in the reserves last year, only four games, and uh, he's now. He used to go to the grammar school, but he's here in Geelong. And I do feel that uh, Newman will be a, a really top-class ruckman in the Louis year. Oh, a very good judge, boy from Bobby the grammar. Too. And he was responsible for the nickname? Uh, he was. He uh, gave me the nickname Sam from the uh, Jackie Gleason show, Sammy Spear and his orchestra. I uh, won't tell you how all that came about, but that's where it's from. He's and the uh, reason why you were called Sam. Well, this bit we loved, yes. uh, Bill, too, oh, where yes. uh, the premiership was won by the Cats and no better man to have up on stage to hand it over than Bobby. But what happened here? He won't give it up. Have a look at him hold it. <laughs> Tom Harley is trying to take it off him here. And he won't give it up. It's unbelievable, <laughs> Bobby. And finally, Tom and Bomber said, I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. And uh, finally gives it up there. But, oh, mate, he, he wanted that Premiership Cup. And uh, he, he actually gave it to Tom Harley to, and uh, really loved that. But he wouldn't give that up. He was fantastic. Didn't drink. Wasn't a drinker. Didn't Used to drink. like a bet. Wasn't a bad punter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was a Always very good punter. Mm. Was he? Got the name Woofer, I think, from the fact that he uh, was punting on dogs heavily at one stage of his career. <laughs> not it sure if that's true or not. A dapper arrangement, Foss. I saw that uh, coaching there. He had the uh, sunnies before his he time. Was, and... uh, James Bond-esque he was. He uh, fancied himself as a bit of a James Bond. Is that where you got it from, Foss? The uh, <laughs> enjoyment of <it> yourself? <laughs> Uh, uh, he put us all in the shade, Bob. Mm. Well, I reckon it's fantastic. And I love the fact that these two boys, Gary, have been able to... Oh, boys. These stars have been able to uh, share a bit of the great Bob Davis. And <laughs> everyone at July, absolutely. <laughs> everyone yeah. in Geelong. We'll be down there, I'm sure, next Tuesday to send him off in the appropriate manner. It'll be fantastic. Now, just on that, uh, the funeral, 1 o'clock next Tuesday at St Mary's there in Geelong. Uh, there'll be screens outside the church and also um, the former pl all the play oh, former players and also current players will form a guard of honour for him as he uh, leaves the church. All right, that'll be fantastic. And uh, he would love nothing more than to see his cats give the uh, Carlton Football Club a nice pumping <laughs> on Friday night at Eddie Hatton. Game this one. The undefeated Cats against the very impressive Blues under the roof. Brock McLean comes back in for Carlton, as does Jeremy Laidler. Bill against his old team. Joseph and Kerno will miss as we swing on to the Cats. Have not lost a game. Under their brand new coach, Chris Scott. Hunt Milburn come back in. Nathan Vardy is in this side. Set to debut. 198 centimetres from the Gippsland under-18s. Taken 42 in the 09 draft, Ling, Lonigan and Menzel will miss. And uh, Bill, we may as well start with you. What's yep. going to happen here? Oh uh, Well, uh, actually, Carlton go pretty well against the Cats last couple of years. They're quick forwards, worry the Cats. So uh, Chris Scott's on to that. And good luck to Nathan Vardy, a tall forward who can play in the ruck a bit. So uh, looking forward to seeing him. They're blooding another new play down there, which is very good. And I think the Cats can just get over the line again. And Andrew Mackey wearing the number four, of course, to play a, a big game. And I think... Um, I think, uh, Samuel, that uh, the Cats have beaten the Blues eight times in a row under the roof. So for some reason, they go well at the Dome against Geelong. Like sport indoors, do they, Jim? Just I think mm. they must, yes. Uh, now, look, 
Uh, I tipped uh, Collingwood last week, yes. so this is not a patronising tip, and they wouldn't be playing for Bob Davis because they'll be playing because they'd be trying anyhow. But I probably think they'll beat Carlton. Be a very, very good game. But mm. uh, having not picked them last week, uh, they surprised me. No, they didn't surprise me, but um, uh, they pleasantly <laughs> surprised me. Uh, well, uh, Chris Scott is enjoying this the dream run as a new coach. Uh, I also picked the Cats last week, and I think I, before um, uh, we knew of this news, I picked Carlton very early in the week, mm. Jim. Uh, I thought they were right for a, an upset, so, and also thought it was at the MCG, not at Eddie Head Stadium. <laughs> but I'll stick with the Blues. I think yeah. an upset coming. Yeah. For the Cats. So uh, there we have it. Uh, a little different opening to the show. We're going to introduce the panel after the break, but it's only fitting that as we go to the break, Samuel, well, uh, well, then well, you look, have the last we'll, one. We'll, we'll... We'll, we'll finish the tribute to Bob. Oh, I could have looked all this up on Google. the internet or Googled if I'd known how to do it. Uh -huh. But these are just recollections of Bob from uh -huh. my perspective. He, uh, he was rejected by South Melbourne when he came down from Clunes to play. Reg Hickey, the uh, legendary coach and man uh, about town at Geelong, welcomed him with open arms. He became a great recruiter, got Graham Polly Farmer, worked tirelessly to get Farmer over to uh, Geelong in the early 60s. Uh, got him into the side and um, then became a successful coach because of that and a couple of other people he got from interstate and just melded the side so he became a successful coach in 63. He then became a printer. He had a printing business with Bernie Smith, the late Bernie Smith, Brownlow medalist for Geelong. He then became a salesman. He used to sell, he would have sold uh, Nissans, but I don't think they're around then, but he <laughs> sold Fords down then in the, uh, just in the late 60s. And he hated being called a used car salesman. He said he was a purveyor of fine automobiles, <laughs> he was. He then, he hated being called a media star. He was just a media participant. Mm. He uh, didn't think he was anything special. And he didn't think he was anything special because he was just himself. And that's what made him special. He was a survivor of uh, Geelong's own financial global crisis, mm. the pyramid collapse, and uh, that set him back a bit, like a few other folk in Geelong, but he uh, resurrected himself and became a motel proprietor <laughs> mm. and uh, opened a motel a down small, there. Small, a small, unit. small, a bit, uh, a bit faulty towers-esque, it was. <laughs> he was a great raconteur. None of the stories he told were true, but he just uh, you sat there spellbound thinking that they must be true because no one could make half that stuff up. He was an extremely proud member of the Geelong Football mm. Club and a very proud member of the team of the century. Uh, he is the originator of My Name Sam. He is a devoted, was a devoted husband to uh, his lovely wife Margaret and a great father to his kids Joe, Prue, Margot, Edwina and Guy. And most of all, most of all, he was an honourable, effusive, Affable, decent, kind, charming, confident but strangely shy man. And Geelong, the city of, would feel fortunate to have had him in their midst. So we will finally say R.I.P. Robert Edwin Davis.
Morning Show, thanks to Crazy Johns and this and our great friends. And just a reminder, coming up later on, Danny Green, oh. Antonio Carver. They are going to get it on. Antonio says he's going to knock our man Greeny out, Gary. And Need a baseball some, bat. And someone else on this panel. Hey, well, don't worry. They'll stick around. It's going to be massive. There's a ring over there for a reason. But now we're going to take a look at a very, very fine panel. And let's get started with the Gold Coast Suns' finest former Hawk Premiership player, great friend of the footy show, Campbell Brown's here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Premiership stars, the Maggie's big power forward, Travis Clark. Oh, and rounding us out, the biggest set of teeth in television, former Hawthorne star, Shane Crawford. Yes. Good morning, boys. Great to have you along. We're going to keep moving because we've got a fair bit to get through. But Brownie, to you, you've been missing for three weeks and the Gold Coast Suns have had two great wins. A memorable first one and then they've rolled the Brisbane line. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Gary. Um, yet to play in a win, but uh, set out the four weeks. Played last week, very rusty, but uh, just glad to be back out and then got the bye this week. Well, you said you'd beat Brisbane. You said it right at the start of the year. You'd become a metre mate if you didn't. So, uh, yeah, prophetic was, words. I was confident right from the very start. I was going to try and get out of it because I wasn't playing, but um, just very grateful. She's a nice night. rivalry bubbling uh, already. Some barbs mm. sent across the bow. Yeah, there's been plenty said. Um, more so on the Brisbane side of things than us. We just went up there and got the points. How long are you aiming to play for this stretch? <laughs> just what, what, are you, what are you hoping to... What, what would you be your best estimate that you could stick around Hope for? for the rest of the year. Here we, really? Yeah, oh, well. next 16. So, but you also said you're not going to change the way you attack. We're not going to no. dwell on the incident because enough's been said about that, yeah. but you did say that you're not going to... We're going to show it though, aren't no, we? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're not no. going to change the way you go about things. I'll try not to, but um, obviously I think with the rules and that, that I've got to have to adapt because um, it's not... But you said you weren't going to change. Some aspects. Um, like but just the building people behind the <laughs> I'll try and yeah, I'll try and cut that out. Um, okay, well, that's but right. we'll uh, move along to Trev. <laughs> uh, big Trev, uh, very strange atmosphere, I imagine, in the Col uh, Collingwood rooms at the end of the game on the weekend. You don't lose too many. Yeah, it's a first for a while, but um, yeah, too long played very well. And what was the feeling like amongst the playing group? Was it one of uh, we got lots to work on? Was it one of oh, well, we know we're that good that it'll it'll just be a, a little blip? What would you? No, not at all. Yeah, obviously we did a lot wrong the night and. Uh, it was a very close game, Pichui, but it was a fantastic spectacle for both teams in the end. We've got some big news coming up about the mm. Collingwood Footy Club. Damien Barrett's going to join us, and we'll look forward to talking to you about it as well. Don't miss it. But we're, we're fascinated with the, uh, the home front from the cloak point of view, aren't we, Fossil? Because uh, we've got a large... Um, menagerie. Sort of menagerie. Very much. <laughs> ...of animals there, and we thought uh, we'd best get a, some photos, if you wouldn't mind bringing them in, and just uh, let us know what you've got. Just talk, just talk us through it. Yeah, there's three of the dogs just taking these on the couch at home. Dogs are fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Horse? That's uh, my sister's horse, Sophie, my little nephew, Lincoln. That doesn't go inside, does it? No, he's a bit big, but that's my little man, Nugget. He's my favourite. Nugget? Nugget, yeah. Does he, he come in? He does. He, he wanders through and... Uh, <laughs> wanders through the house. He comes through for a bit. I see. What about the turtles? <laughs> yeah, they're in hibernation at the moment, so it's that time of year a bit cold for them and they sleep for a few months. Wow. Uh, do they come into the house, the turtles? <laughs> they actually live in the bath, up in the bathroom. You want to be careful. You want to be careful. Nugget doesn't step on him. Yeah, no, no, no stays away from them. More but, um, crap on him. Yeah. He's, he's actually done that once before. He's actually had a nice crap. Does the horse, the horse. Uh, has it? The horse has crapped yeah, in the last room. He's done it once before. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it must be just a, just a riot to go around there for a, just some canapes and a small drink there, and have Nugget come through and open his bowels on the bloody axe mister. <laughs> canapes. It's just the animal lovers. We love it. And speaking of which. Shane Crawford's back from London. Welcome back, Paul. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Enjoy your time over there. What you, you did all of two minutes for our show. You uh, did about a minute and 30, yeah. But we worked very hard. Yeah. So uh, we were there for five days. Yep. And, um, yeah, it was a great trip. I'm glad I could help out. Flew with Qantas? Yeah, first class. How good is Qantas? Unbelievable. Ken, Margaret, Boyd, everyone oh. involved down there at Qantas. Wouldn't mind going back, actually. <laughs> Uh, we've got plenty to get through, Shane, and I hope you're up for a big night tonight because I'm suggesting you might need it. But uh, let's move on because we're going to have a look at another game and it is St Kilda taking on Melbourne Saturday at Eddie Yes, they are. Uh, 
St Kilda taking on Melbourne. We'll have a look at the Saints. Not going so well, but it's going to turn. Surely it's going to turn this week. Fisher averaging 110 super coach points. In comes Peak. Blake, I hope he plays in the forward line, Blake, because I reckon he might add something there. Montagna and Winmar in, which is good to see. And we have a look at the Ds who had a disappointing loss last week. After thumping Adelaide the week before, Sylvia, 114 super coach points. McDonald, Rivers, Bate, McKenzie and Evans, they all come in. This is going to be a good match because both sides have got a rebound from last week. Who's going to win? Got no idea really. Maybe I'm leaning just towards St Kilda because of Revo. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to go St Kilda. I think they're a fantastic side and obviously things haven't gone their way and I think they'll come away with a nice win. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stake for this game. Um, I'm tipping Melbourne to, to bounce back after disappointment. Fossil. Go you, Ds. <laughs> what? Nothing. You think they're a fantastic side, do you, Trev? Yeah, I think they are, actually. Obviously, yeah. they haven't won many games, but I think they'll start to How, how would you qualify a, a fantastic side? By games they win or just... Obviously, they'd like to win more games, but they've got a fantastic core. They'd like to win one. <laughs> yeah, it'll come eventually. They will. They'll get there. It's whether they think they've uh, lost the season or not. Gary, if they think the season's over for them, it'll sweep through. That feeling of dejection will sweep through them. And I there are only a couple of games outside of the eight. This time, so surely they're not going to give up yet, Sam. Was one and six in nearly exactly the same boat. Came back and played in the finals. So there's no reason that the Saints can't do that. <laughs> well, I'm saying they think it's just about over, and I think Melbourne will take advantage of their pessimism. <laughs> I think Mark Jamo out of this Melbourne side. Uh, Is he? He's out? Like, yeah, he's, he's oh, out last well, week as well. And Grimes and Garland. I think St Kilda might win, unfortunately. Out. Now, last week we saw oh, an yes. extraordinary bit of vision, James. We did, we it loved was it. was television at its absolute finest. It was our man, the fossil, oh, shooting a pilot for a show a called chance. A Sporting and Chance. Boys, well, come on. playing for you at home. Now, and if you want to take a Sporting Chance... I'm well, not sure why this didn't get up in the end. No, no we're not either. It was a smooth well, well, host. What, what, so what's the point of doing it again? It was a hosting performance. Maybe the blue-on-blue right. blue, uh, tie-jacket sort of ensemble. But what we had... Oh, uh, Gary, pardon me, Pierre Cardin. What we had was... <laughs> Some look-alike sent in from oh, our uh, unbelievable our reaction. family here on the footy show, and we absolutely loved it. Let's have a look at a couple of them got sent through. This <laughs> Kramer from Seinfeld. One bloke thought that you looked a lot like him, and there's the old fish. That... So a couple there, Foss. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> very, very good. You had a different look running back in those days, let's be honest, Foss. But what unbelievably has happened? Oh, is, no. Uh, Jim, What's please. happened? Is, when you run these things, people tend to uh, dig go back through their archive of stuff and send it in. Archival footage? We thought that would be the end of the hosting for our man, the <laughs> yep. Foss uh, Brownie, oh, no. because um, it, it wasn't a great performance, but... It has come to light. Oh no! Back in the day, the oh, midday no. show was. No, I never it hosted was the midday. Well, this is the biggest uh, show on television. It was I never hosted scary. daytime television. Kerry Ann was running a very tight she ship. She was on this no. particular day. I believe oh, she was no. absent, oh. and they turned to our man, the Foss. Here we go. No, they didn't. They Get him did on. to host the midday show. Have a look <laughs> at this. The Nine Network and stations across Australia proudly present. Midday with Kerry Ann. Oh no. No. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. The name's Newman. <laughs> Sam Newman. Oh, 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 look at this work! <laughs> This is back in 1996. That's not hosting this no, show. 1996, this. when you hosted uh, I, the That's just being a prop for the singer. That is not, because I watched the rest of it. You, you bullshit. You, you did, did an interview with the Paralympians. What? You did an interview with Bob Simpson, who'd just been sacked as the Australian cricket coach. You hosted the whole lot, Foss. You did not host that. You did the that, Who was the ladies woman singing? Not no. sure. We were more focused on the women that were uh, just painting a picture <laughs> that, around. I was just force. a prop for, no, you were. No, for you, the woman no, singing you Thunderball not. or something. No, you were not. You hosted the whole show and you did it very well. Next week, we think we oh, might just no. take our Jeez. seat and you can come out and yeah. piss off if you, you wouldn't mind. You just looked a bit uncomfortable, we thought, I'm standing there with those uncomfortable. women. I look uncomfortable <laughs> pretending I was... Give us that line again. The name's Newman, Sam Newman. Go Go Gary. <laughs> Down the barrel. Come on. G Gary. 
The Walther PPK uh, in hand, Foss? Yeah. A Walther PPK. <laughs> yes. A or Smith a Verena? And we- <laughs> Smith & Wesson. You've had your six. <laughs> Boom. Uh, now, Gary. Yes, no, like, don't, don't keep goading me, because, you know, you, when you're on the stretcher and all that other crap that you don't <laughs> like, and give the warning, you get the brace. Yeah, I do. At least I take it in no. good spirit. That's I don't no. go and get the sulks. No, it's a the very, back very and reprimand good... half the bloody crew <laughs> out the back. <laughs> Samuel. Good, good point. One more time, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Oh, 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 here it is. Here it is. My name's Newman. Oh, I was only a Sam prop Newman. for the... <laughs> Packing some considerable heat there, yeah, Foss, too. Now, <laughs> will our great family again dig up any more this yes. week? Is there any more hosting stuff we don't know I'll about? I'll tell you what'll happen uh, next week. Before next week, eh, I'll come to the meetings and I'll find out <laughs> what is in the show. <laughs> what is in the show next week, eh? Yeah, that's what we will do. Very good idea. We're going to take a break on the oh, footy show. Sam it. gets his say mailbag. That's next. <laughs> Smart meters, dumb idea. Sydney's electricity scandal. The new technology that sends you a shocking power bill. A current affair tomorrow. Australia's most powerful tradie. With a 140 kilowatt turbo diesel, 3,000 kilogram brake towing capacity, VDC and six airbags, the Nissan Navara STX Dual Cab is Australia's most powerful trading. And right now, you can get one for just 46 888 drive away. And that's a powerful saving. Shift the way you move. Must be 18 years of age or older. Carrier or long distance charges may apply. Hey, singles, grab your phone, call Lava Life Voice, and join the party. Record a greeting, listen to profiles, and exchange messages with hundreds of exciting local singles, all by phone. It's safe, sexy, completely confidential, and it's always free to browse. So grab your phone, call Lava Life Voice, and get connected with hundreds of fun and exciting singles. Call now. Chewing two pieces of extra professional plus calcium for just 20 minutes gives you 10% of your RDI of calcium. TVs have got it. Fridges have got it. Cameras and computers, even blenders have got it. In fact, everything at Bingley has got it. No deposit, five years interest-free on any purchase over Australia's most powerful tradie, the Nissan Navara. And I can tell you that the winner tonight, you'll like this one, Foss. Uh, that's Jan, uh, James Riley up there. The most powerful thing he did, he shot himself in the hand with a nail gun. He left it in until after work and then he pulled it out with a claw hammer. So that's a powerful <laughs> thing, Jim. So that's why James is sitting in the magnificent Nissan Navara power seats. Footyshow.com.au. Tell us the most powerful thing you've done and you might be up there. Time now for Sam's Mailbag. No. Don't the, the big you dare white pointer. Go on about that again. Just We're, came through during the week, did it? Just Foss? came through the old R11 tailor made Jimmy. <laughs> Look we at mentioned you. it. That, you <laughs> gave him that many plugs last like week. Like the one with the stiff shaft, it's the regular shaft. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Where would we go down to the Albert Park driving oh. range and have a bit of a tonk? Oh, I would have thought that Foss. Get on with it. Not bad down there. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. How many did they send in? Yeah, only the one. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Well, bad luck. <laughs> now, um, this is Sebastian of Atwood. 
G'day, Sammy. Now, I've seen a number of player reviews over the years to know you and Gary hate dancing, but I also know you both like a wager. Are you both man enough to accept, Gary? Are we man enough to accept a wager about dancing? About what? Dancing. dancing. I hope I speak clearly. <laughs> <laughs> dancing. Yeah. You'll be up Do you want me to again? read that first part yeah, again? Yes. Right. I'll read it out okay, again. Yes. Yep. I've uh, seen a number of player right, reviews, okay. but I also know you both like to accept a wager. Are you both man enough to accept? Yes, we are. I have sent through a look-alike of each of you dancing. Whoever the audience think is the better look-alike, that person then has to learn that dance. What do you reckon? I know you're not gutless Sam. I am. Pardon? I'm not dancing. This is up to the audience. Mm. If, if, the, if the audience think... Uh, first up, Fossil, here is your look-alike. This is, this is what he thinks I look Double like. dream feet! <laughs> <laughs> Rubber legs! <laughs> Touch the side. And rubber lights. Second verse. That's, um, that's the dream feet dance from that man did that. And this is go yabba puppet dancing. This is you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one, Gary. Oh, not so funny. Not so funny now, is it? Oh, eh? oh my God! You know, me hosting the midday show. Yeah. Not so funny <laughs> when the stuff. Stuff puppet comes out. It's because of the eyebrow, Gary. Hey, Gary. Gary. Right, oh, Righto, you Jeff, give the audience oh, the yeah. test. It was a ferocious <laughs> eyebrow. Yeah. All right. yeah. Here we go. Do we like the man who looks like Gary Boosie and Sam Newman? Yeah. Wait, oh. wait for or it, Gary. Or do we like Yabba puppet dancing looks like Gary? Yeah. Come on, Gary. I'll All you left to do I'm is not doing a dance. All you left to do is just put the green suit oh, on. Well, I'll do that. <laughs> so you'll you'll be doing that next week. Oh, of course I will. <laughs> Are you up for it? <laughs> you can't get the suit apparently. So oh, really? <laughs> we'll run one up for you in a week. <laughs> well, Audrey of Glen up. What? Oh, sorry, well, I would like to see you have a crack at that other stuff too. That shoulder lift. <laughs> oh, would you? Do? I would. Well, had the audience uh, selected me, I'd be. On a revote. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a selection there. Bro. Too late. Too late. <laughs> I think uh, they selected you. I Gary. think you're up for the whole. This three is minutes. from Audrey of Glen Iris. Audrey. It's a Ord. What? Yeah, Ord. So it's a, it's a, a sort of a lovely name. It's, it's an old style name, isn't it? Oh, from it? maybe from Hepburn. Mm. Oh. Normally on Thursday, I watch reruns of Yes Minister or the Gruen Transfer. Yes. But last week I stumbled on your football show. Are are you really allowed to use the F word so blatantly? Back to the ABC for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Well, uh, Audrey, um, thank you for being um, put out by us saying the F word, but we were only saying it in context uh, for a number of clips that came yes. in where commentators... And it was very late at night. Well, I don't think it matters when you say well, the F word, it still well, sounds the same, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> If I said it at half past five yes. in the afternoon, it would still no, have I the same that, meaning. But our audience had to get it's a bit more I think Audrey, no tolerable. matter when you said it, would be put out All by right. the F word. Right. Uh, we only said it in context because uh, a lot of commentators had said it, and our apologies. Um, because you love the ABC so much, Audrey, uh, here is one of our own, Fatty Vorton, on the ABC. It seemed to me that every game was a stronger game than perhaps some of the games in the southern part. Yeah, well, you'll see that the uh, top three teams that finished there were Canterbury, Cronulla, and, uh... Fuck it. <laughs> not, we're not quite sure uh, what's happening here. We've got some communication problems. <laughs> oh, oh, <no. laughs> 
So, so we, we wouldn't swear gratuitously, Audrey. We were just pointing out that sometimes people make <laughs> Freudian slips. And if you're actually still a devotee of the ABC, could I invite you to tune into a show called Angry Boys? <laughs> uh, that should get your attention. <laughs> Julie of Murrumbina, hi sexy Sam, or should I say my fossil fantasy. Ooh. I know you <laughs> I know you joke about never getting any action. That is I don't joke about it. <laughs> Here is something you should try. Julie thinks I should try these. These oh. are called um, fundies. These are called fundies. Oh. Uh, two people wear them. Oh. They've got they've got a hot there's legs there. Oh, no. <laughs> She says half the fun is getting into them, yeah. um, and they come with no. They come, they come with no instructions. So getting in will cause ructions. Uh, that's why would you? Why would you actually do that, Gary? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how it works. I, I, I don't actually know how it works. You why wouldn't. don't you get on, in them with Shane? <laughs> Put my legs in the back. Back to? The back to. <laughs> Just one minute, Shane. Is there any woman that would like to have oh. a crack at it? <laughs> no, no, none. Uh, All right, that's you, it. Right, Shane. So you now, look. you've got to get in there. <laughs> face you or that way? No, face, face me. Face, face, face you. <laughs> Where's the packet? Uh, English, face, face on. You face, face me, on. you idiot. What oh, do you think okay. I'm going to... I think I'm going to back end you or something. Uh, you know, you've got to get in the front by right here. These are called fundies. Look, it's the whole... What? Here, come here. Well, he's got to get in oh, them right, first, right, you right. fool. All right, here we go. Oh. Try this at home. This will be fantastic. Now, you've got to pull them up. <laughs> come out here, Stan. Come out here. Get up, boys. Stand up, you fool. Oh, I'll, pull, I'll pull my pants up. <laughs> oh, they're touching. It's touching. It's touching. You haven't got your, you haven't got your finger down your trousers, have you? <laughs> oh, this feels a bit awkward. What about it? Hang on. Hang on. You're not meant to do it that way. You're meant to do it this way. Sure. <laughs> Why would you do that, Gary? Is that good? Now, no, seriously. Oh. All right, well, All right. <laughs> if you want to be a part of Sam's marble... It's a G-string. It is very easy. <laughs> Box 9, Melbourne, Victoria, 3001. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sams.mailbag at 9.com.au or thefootyshow.com.au, Gary. <laughs> Probably for no, smaller but, people, fossil. But, but Gary, can our I bits ask you were rubbing up against question. each other. It's what? Not, I turned around because our bits were rubbing each other. I, well, I, I, I think know, it was yours. I noticed it, so. Definitely mine. Yeah, Agate's like Tom Bowles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Gary, what? What? What would you? Uh, well, what I'm would you not, think? Not knocking the product, but what would There's you? Something different, probably. You just know? what? To, to what? To to the get precursor. Spice up your yeah. love life. Mm. To uh, chat someone up down at the hotel ah, and then whip them home and say, look, would you like to get into these? <laughs> <laughs> They'd say, oh, come on, let's get on no, with it. You and I have been out of it for too long. That might be the modern way. That might be the thing it is. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're trot, you're trapped, that's it. You've got to go on with it. Right, I put Adelaide take on the Fremantle Footy Club on Saturday. Eddie had stayed here last week. Uh, went down to Sydney by 62 points in the end. for Adelaide. Shields kicked two, Motlop two. Pittard Company was a late withdrawal. Daniel Stewart is the player that's been omitted. And won seven in the last ten at Aden Stadium against the Fremantle Dockers, who lost to West Coast by 33 points at Paris. <laughs> Candy kicked three, Lacar kicked two. Valentine comes in with Reese Palmer. Mazunga comes in with Robinan, or Robinan. McPhee, Anthony, Van Burlo and Pitt have been omitted. Uh, Freo just inside the eight. Eight, uh, four wins and three losses. Uh, Shane, you know a little bit about the new boy Mazunga, don't you? Mazungu. Mazungu. Yeah, Tell us he, uh, he was going to play early in the year, but uh, he was injured. Mature uh, age, 24. Yeah, plays through the midfield. Yep. And um, he, I think he played for West Perth last year. What is and he? did really well. He's a ball magnet. No, yeah, no. Absolutely. What, 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 what uh, is nationality? nationality? Yes. Don't uh, know, I don't know. 
Don't guess if you don't know. No, I don't know. Zimbabwe or we'll yep, I think he is. No, I'm not sure. What's not 100% sure. Name? Um, from the Congo or the Zulu? No, just leave we'll it with me for out. a sec. It's not coming to Zungu. me. Zungu. We will find out and let you know. Who are you tipping? Fremantle? Uh... I, I think aside with um, Sandilands, uh, Mundy's playing really well, and Ballantyne back into it, I think Fremantle should win against Port Adelaide. Trent, you're the same. Going with Fremantle. I think they're a fantastic side. And also, Port may have won the last ten games at Amy Park, but Freo, uh, Freo won the last two games against him, so go on Freo. Brent? Yeah. Freo got the wood over... Uh, Port of, of late, and I think uh, Ballantyne's a massive in. He just gives them that, that spark up forward. And also, Reese Palmer, good to see him back. So, I'm going to go with uh, the Dockers. All right. Samuel? I'm not so sure about that. They've been not that good, the Fremantle Dockers, have they? Four wins, three losses. Tendai Mazungu. Tendai's his Just come name. to me there. Just yep. come to me there. Where, where is he from? We're finding that He's out. From, he plays with Fremantle. West Perth. <laughs> yep. Well, what name would what? Dezungu be? Tendai well, we'll Mazungu. find that out. I think it's French. Kenyan. Maybe. Did you say Kenyan? No, I said Tendai. We will find Kenyan. it out. <laughs> Who's going to win? Uh, well, I actually think Port Adelaide might win. Yeah. Oh. I don't. I think Fremantle will win that game. We might ask this um, fine man in the crowd we have here. His name is Steve Twite, and it's very nice to have you in here. Hello, Steve. Who do you, you think is going to win this game? Dockers will kill him. Well, the reason you say this is this, Gary, is yes. the most passionate Fremantle Dockers I fan know. the world has ever seen. I know. This man, by the way, before I get him to show his absolute party trick, uh, here we go. This is the man. He's got a purple HSV wagon, Dockers licence plates, 38 Dockers shirts in his wardrobe, drinks the beer dry dock, wears purple reading glasses, and they're actually women's, uh, only wears boxer shorts that are purple, uh, he's got a Dockers gnome in his front garden, Framed Eagles poster showing he wooden spoon, if you don't mind. And a daughter and getting married on the 31st of uh, December, which is the Pav's birthday. And did you and see that she's wearing purple. She's wearing purple? <laughs> she's not wearing purple. Yeah. Well, she's getting married in purple. Yeah, the bride's made to be purple. Everybody be purple. Well, <laughs> Stevie, what we need to do is get nice and tied in because this is what Steve's yes. done that is, goes beyond any other uh, Fremantle supporter. Have a look at the tooth. Open it up for us, Stevie. He's got an anchor in his tooth. Have a look at this. Now, Steve, is that a crown that you just decided to get a bit funky with or is that your actual tooth? Uh, it's actual tooth. I need a bit of work done. I actually you wanted a, a purple work. tooth, but the missus wasn't too happy about that, so we went the gold anchor. Well, you're going to get a purple tooth. Yeah. So, <laughs> Steve, for... Steve Twight, is it? We're pronouncing the name correctly, yeah, you're are doing we? well, Sam, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> if, if, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> if we dyed these purple, do you want to get married in these, mate? <laughs> I don't see a problem with that. Hey? I don't see a problem. Now, it's look, purple, we've, uh, right. we've clubbed together, we've bought you this. You can wear that. That's oh, a new thing. Uh, <laughs> that's, you, that's a gift from us, Steve. You're yeah, a good man, Why Sam. have you become uh, enchanted with the Dockers? Oh, uh, Frio. What? Fremantle. You're a Frio boy? Frio, yeah. Uh, well done. What well, about last week in the, in the uh, what do they call it over there? The Derby. Derby. The Derby. Yeah. It was disappointing. I, I don't know. You're breaking up, Gary. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you got 38 Dockers shirts. Uh, clearly, that's the only thing you wear. Yeah. Well, you've got 39 now. You can have that one. Uh, hands together for Steve yeah. Twight, mate. Yeah. Let's uh, take a look at this game, which is going to be enormous. Dream time at the G on Saturday night. This is a great game. Celebration of Indigenous football, which is terrific. Tigers have won seven of their last ten against Essendon. Tuck, Farmer and Brown come in for Edwards, Nason and Graham Nahas is in a rich vein of form. As you can see there as we swing across to the Bombers. Third on the ladder, but got some big outs coming into this Dreamtime game. Watson is out with a hamstring. Hawking's out suspended. Collier joins them on the sidelines. Davy Stanton and Slattery Shane come in. What do you think's going to happen? Uh, I think it'll be a great match. I reckon the Tigers will be up and about. But, uh, I'm actually not picking the Tigers. I think they'll play well, but I'm actually picking Essendon. <laughs> but, uh, I just think they're playing too well, the Bombers. And I know uh, a few players go out, but um, a few good players come in. So I think they'll get across the line. Yeah, I'm going against you, Croft. Sorry, mate. I reckon the Tigers are going to go. There's too many key assets for the Bombers. And... Uh, Tigers that win by a couple of goals, I reckon, on the dream time. 
Yeah, it'll be a free-flowing, high-scoring game. Um, I think Essendon are the real deal. I think they can uh, really challenge Collingwood and, and Geelong to uh, win the flag in the form they're in at the moment. So I'm going to go with them. What do you think, Mr Newman? Sam Newman. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a bad one, Foss. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> uh, Trev, uh, that bling is not uh, strobing into your brain, is it? Uh, you <laughs> no. reckon you got a lot there, mate. Just presents I picked up along the way, yep. <laughs> what, some little trinkets and amulets? Yeah, I've picked this one up. It's a replica of Dad's ring. I had it from the 21st it's birthday. a replica of Dad's ring, Yeah, it's it? identical, so... <laughs> Identical? What is it? Why did you get a replica of Dad's ring? Growing up, always liked it. He had it made, and when I got to 21, Mum had one made identical. So and the a... identity bracelet up on your wrist? What's no, that? it's just something to go along with it, yeah. You yeah. know, just a little bit of bling. What about the Premiership yeah. ring? You wear that one around? Yeah, I do wear that. Uh, I wear it quite regularly, yeah. It's just yeah. a nice piece at Alan Dydak Design, so... I think you could add a bit to your setup, Foss. You're a bit jewelryless, Foss. Yeah, I know. I'm not, a, not into it all, Gary. Don't wear a watch. Don't wear any uh, adornments. A little really. ring for you, maybe? No, I don't. I'm right for rings. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you think the winner of this game looks like, Foss? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I think I've been mesmerised and modified by the, the bling. Tigers. I'm going for the Tigers as well. Yeah. Now, Gary, before we get your tip, this yeah. is the one off jumper that the Tigers will be wearing, and I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, They've gone a different great. way with it, and it's uh, a celebration, as we said, of Indigenous football, and I think that that. I'm just doing them a favour by getting the front end back sponsor in. So, I think they're for sale, Margie, Jim. there you go. All proceeds go to Richmond's Indigenous programming. So you what are Essendon those? wearing? Essendon have also got a special jumper. Well, they don't have well any players, Richmond. Are you pardon? The Indigenous program. Yeah, well, one of them's injured. So, yes. so we haven't got an Essendon jumper. No, they not, got an indigenous I'm not sure they're doing anything theirs. different with well, I saw a photo on the paper. I don't know whether that's the jumper the they're going to wear. the gold sun on the black and red yes. background. Yes. No, it's not the jumper I'm told they're wearing. I think they're just going to wear their traditional strip. Who's winning, Gary? Essendon, um, I'm tipping. <laughs> but I think it's going to be a really good game. Uh, Joe Watson and Hocking out will make things differently. Now, don't go away. Damien Barrett is up next. He's got a big news story on a Collingwood <laughs> superstar player. He's got news about the St Kilda coach in Ross Lyon. We've got the feel-good... <laughs> not even looking at him. Feel good comeback story of the year. Just before we go, Gary. <laughs> oh, no. We asked people to send in lookalikes in the Eurovision, <laughs> oh, no. Eurovision Song Contest. Oh, and this bloke this. took no notice of the European Song Contest. <laughs> he just sent in a lot of lookalikes of you. <laughs> and uh, they're all you, Gary. Oh, all of them. That's fantastic. And uh, it is uh, from uh, Odette Boyle. And Michael Johnson, so they've won two tickets to come oh, into the they? show and they have can they? meet Gary and right. uh, say you, exactly what they're thinking. Send in your lookalikes of Sam next week no. and I'll give you four tickets to the <laughs> <laughs> That's all the stuff there. Exactly. All right, I was getting very serious about the big news coming up. And also, Mick Malthouse. Sam Newman caught up with Mick Malthouse who tried to explain his bread story. So it's a pretty weird setup coming up. Don't go away. That's next week. <laughs> Time now to welcome one of the best newsbreakers in the game. And I'm not talking every now and then. I'm not talking just cracking the odd one. I'm talking week in, week out. He's here this uh, week and we're looking forward to it enormously. Damien Barrett, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How are you, Damien? Thank you. Collingwood Footy Club, Damo. Uh, they've got some superstar players on their list who have been in the sights of Greater West Sydney for some time. We've had Dane Swan already commit to the footy club. Uh, Dale Thomas sits in the wind. Where are we at with Scott Pendlebury? Well, finally, Gary, that deal is done. And uh, the deal to keep Scott Pendlebury at Collingwood has been resolved this week. The two parties, after months of negotiations, finally reached agreement this week. So okay. he will be staying at Collingwood. All right, well... <laughs> That is very, very good news for the Collingwood Footy Club and it's been speculated for some time that that was going to happen, but there is a twist to this. Yeah, and it's an intriguing twist. The twist is that the deal that he has signed with Collingwood or is about to sign with Collingwood has him extended his contract by just one year only. He was already contracted for the remainder of 2011. What this new deal does takes him out to the end of 2012. It's, uh, it's intriguing because... it basically means this time next year we will again be talking about what he's going to be doing with his future. So, new deal, but only one year added to it. Now, we can only speculate as to why that, be, that is the case. We've had Dane Swan commit for three years, which takes him outside of Greater West Sydney's clutches. Uh, we've right. had this man over here, Travis Cloak, who was eagerly sought by the Essendon Footy Club. He signed a long-term contract for less money, we believe. Why would someone 
such as Scott Pendlebury, commit for just one year. It's, it's, it's an intriguing one. The people who are closest to this have uh, shut their phones down tonight. We're putting calls to the people around it. There's been no return calls. But we have to speculate, and what we do speculate mostly upon is the fact that GWS, which comes into the competition next year, as we know, has a two-year window to attract out-of-contract players from other clubs. And we said on the footy show about a month mm -hmm. ago that it was going to be the second year in which they really targeted big-time these out-of-contract players. That leaves Scott Pendlebury in that window. In the second year, he's out of contract at the end of next year. The GWS will still have a crack at people like Scott Pendlebury at that period, and that is when they're going to strike. Was so it his choice? Mightn't have been. Might, Collingwood might have only said we want you want to sign you for a year. I reckon it's fair to say that Collingwood wanted him a bit longer than the, the one he's agreed to, Sam. So uh, again, no, they're not saying anything tonight. Can't even make contact with them. And uh, devil's advocate manage. then. So and again, we don't know anything, but he's hedging his bets. He's, yeah. he's saying, I want to yes. sit back. I'm going to see what unfolds from a Greater West Sydney point of view. See how the club establishes. See who they can attract to the footy club, and still have my options open if, if that's the way he wants to go. It does. I mean, the debate has lasted until now, the, the round nine stage of this season. We, we can only imagine it's going to now ramp up again in the same time frame as. Uh, as this Gary, year, again next year. Don't be naive, Gary. It's nothing naive. to do with options, how they formulate, how they set Why up. Not? It'll be how much money they've got. Yeah, well, keeping his options open. Yeah, Sam don't worry about how they set up or who else they're going to get well, or he, where he, they're located he, or who's going to be the president. They, he's just, it's money. Well, he would have been offered a large, large sum if he wanted to head to Greater West Sydney next year, Samuel. So why postpone it for just 12 months? Maybe he's waiting to see what his options are. <laughs> but um, he's taking a punt to Damo with that because, I mean, if he nukes his knee around 12 next year, then suddenly, uh, you know, his, his, his own situation changes enormously. Good so point, a longer-term uh, contract is, is good for the player as well as yeah, uh, the club. Yeah, no doubt. He's a guy who backs himself. And we saw last year, he had an outstanding year last year. I mean, second to, to Dane Swan, who has re-signed for a longer period in, in the best and fairest. A great final series as he had. So, but he's prepared to back himself. He always has been. And um, I, I think it's interesting. We might ask Travis, I think, Gary and, and JB, what do you make of that? I mean, you were in that same situation at the end of last year and, and you decided to commit longer term. Do you, do you read much into no, what Scott's done? Not at all. I spoke to him a few weeks ago. He said the finer details are getting done. He's going to be here next year. That's what we look forward to, just having him this year and next year. And we'll look forward to hearing what he's got to say in another 12 to 16 months, I guess. Marie, he'd be in a different category to you, Trav, because you'd have to sever ties with Nugget if you were up there. <laughs> I don't think you'd like it up there in GWS. We uh, so, wouldn't take Nugget with you, would you? I would, would like to take him with me. He's a nice yeah. little pet. He'd, he'd slip in just unnoticed up in West Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, Damo, that's Pendlebury uh, and Dane Swan tied up for the Collingwood. So yeah. for the, mean, uh, the short time, anyway, short term rather. What about Daisy Thomas, who sat here on this panel three or four weeks ago and said to us that he would like to have his contract negotiations all tied up by the mid-year break? And now we're at round nine. Uh, it's only three or four weeks down the track. Are, mm. are they going to get that done? I doubt it. Uh, there's been no thing, nothing significant since that point. And right now, uh, there's been no talks about Daisy Thomas uh, and Collingwood about an extension of that. He's, um, I think he's handled it very cleverly and very differently. He's open to offers and he's publicly happy to, to say that. And uh, I think this one could play out right to the end. And who knows, he may well be considering a similar arrangement to what his, uh, his good mate Scott Pendlebury's done. All right, very interesting. We'll watch uh, with great interest over the coming weeks. Now, what about Ross Lyon, who uh, has been in the news, speculation about his contract, whether he will stay. He's contracted until the end of next year. Now, he came out this week and said that he's in for the long haul, he's going to see out his contract, and we take him at his word for that. Yep. But uh, there is a little twist in his contract which could make it uh, easier if he wanted to get out of it. Yeah, the, the twist there is that there's a, a Mark Thompson-like clause in that contract that he's got. It, it's it's a get-out clause. It's referred to as a termination provision, and it's available to both Ross Lyon himself and the club at any stage, at any time of this contract that he's got, which at the moment runs until the end of 2012. He or the club can move to, to remove that themselves from that particular deal. It's, a, it's something that both, as you say, Gary, Ross and the club went to extraordinary lengths to distance themselves from happening in public and strong public statements this week. But the clause is there. We, we can reveal that as, as a fact tonight. The clause is in that contract, as it was with, uh, with Mark Thompson, who this time last year was, would have been a, a million to one to leave the contract that he had with Geelong. So there can be some space. There is interest in Ross Lyon. There's been no, as far as we can tell, formal approaches, but there is interest in Ross Lyon from the clubs that have coaches out of contract at the end of this year. And Mick Nettlefold, the uh, CEO of the Prez, yep. 
the, said uh, that he had the full backing of the committee, so that should be comforting for him. <laughs> so, so, for all intents and purposes, either uh, Ross Lyon or the St Kilda Footy Club can say, listen, get to the end of this year, it's been great, but we think it's time to move on and there's nothing standing in either party's way. That, that's how it stands. I mean, that would fly in the face of what they both said publicly. Guess just on, on that, I mean, what do you make of Ross Lyon? Is, is he a coach who is mm. suited to a club in a, in a rebuild phase, which a lot of people now think St Kilda are? Or is he better suited to the club that's uh, having a crack? No, I, know, I don't think you'd uh, category, uh, categorise him either way. Uh, it all will come back to the fire inside Ross and how keen he is to rebuild this footy club because they are in a rebuilding process. I don't think there's, well, I personally don't think there's any doubt about that. Now, if he's got fire in the ballot and he wants to go through the process, then he should stay and see out that contract and halfway through next year you see exactly where they're at. But it's an interesting clause, and who knows, they may get to the end of the year and he might say, I can't take them any further. We'll see what happened at Geelong. Mark Thompson left, new young coach came in, reinvigorated a list that many people thought would just drop off the face of the earth. And now look at them, unbeaten after seven games. So I think it's interesting times ahead for the St Kilda for you. Fair, Damo. I'm not sure that Ross would be the only coach with a clause similar to that in his contract. I think now the modern ones, you know, want to have some room to move. What about your man? Not going to discuss that soon. Ooh, well, Mainly because I don't ooh. actually know. No uh, from the president. You don't know. No, I don't know uh, the you exact don't know clause. The and even if I did, I wouldn't be, of your coach. No, I don't know the exact clause uh, and its relevance to Ross Lyon. But what I'm saying is I'd be very surprised if 90% of coaches didn't have a similar contract in there. Not sort, of figures, in not sort of figures that high, JB. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a certainly the recently phenomenon. signed ones. Ooh, I think. Purple. Mm, yeah. purple disputing that. Um, <laughs> uh, listen, Damo, what about you, you reported a, a month ago that uh, Flying Start was about to be sold to a consortium led by Clinton Casey, of course, Flying Start, the management company run by Ricky Nixon. That deal's gone through. Yeah, it has, and it's uh, going to be headed by Scott Lucas, a former Essendon player. Clyde Davenport of the Davenport Group is also a, uh, a funder of, of the new process. Ricky Nixon, uh, as we know, is now barred as being a manager. Scott Lucas was a former Ricky Nixon client. Winston Rouse, who worked for Flying Start, will be part of it, as will Rowan Smith, who will oversee the, uh, the junior development side of it, the V Squad. Nick Revold and Nick Dalsano, big St Kilda names, unlikely at this stage to be part of the new group, Phoenix Management Group, unlikely to stay, but two big names who we think will stay are uh, Dustin Martin and Jack Revold. And today we caught up with Scott Lucas of Phoenix Management Group to ask him what it's all about. Well, uh, a unique opportunity was presented to me working in player development and working with players at the AFL Players Association this year has uh, grew my interest in uh, assisting players and to me it's uh, building on that. Ricky Nixon's company it carries a bit of a stigma with it. Are you prepared for that stigma in the marketplace? Oh look, we're going to be valued uh, and decided upon on how we present to players going forward and what we do going forward. So we're very much uh, Looking at that, I will say that uh, Ricky in many ways was a trailblazer for the industry and did uh, an enormous amount of good for many players, of which I was one. Uh, hasn't gone uh, as well the last year or two, which is clear, and we're aware of that. But uh, look, Ricky's been a, a fine uh, person to me, and uh, leave it at that. Nick Revolt's made some comments about Ricky and his involvement with uh, Ricky. Do you think you'll be able to keep him? Oh, look, we'd certainly like to chat with Nick going forward and present to him what we think we can offer him and go from there. But certainly uh, there's a relationship between Ricky and Nick uh, that has occurred that we need to deal with also. Scott Lucas there, good luck in his new venture. Now, Damo, to finish off, one of the great news stories, feel-good stories of the AFL season about to unfold on the weekend, providing a young man can get through one final training session. Yeah, Max Bailey, Gary, is the, the guy in question. He's played six games since debuting in 2006. He's had three knee reconstructions. He's played just, as we said, six games. Hasn't played since round 22 of 2009. Tonight he's been named as an extended bench player in the Hawthorne team to play the Swans on Sunday. He is in the 22, provided he gets to a training session. It's as simple as that. There's one more match committee meeting to happen. He will they tick the boxes if he gets to the training session. So in the same draft, same first round draft selection as Dale Thomas was, he's about to play his 120th match, Dale Thomas. Max Bailey's about to play his seventh, and this will be on the weekend on Sunday against the Swans, should he get through one more training session. Unbelievable story. Max Bailey sitting at home. Uh, all the footy world wishes you the best. Three knee reconstructions. Great story of resilience and perseverance and... Um, uh, loyalty from the Hawthorne Footy Club. So to you, Max, well done. Damien <laughs> Barrett, wonderful day. I've got by you, Damo. Excellent. Big news here. Let's head on to the next game. It involves Collingwood and they take on the Adelaide Pros. Yeah, we have a look at the mighty 
Collingwood side, and uh, there it is. Dale Thomas having a great year. Swan just warming into it. Sure, there are 109 super coach points. McCarthy, Keith, Beams, Maxwell, they all come in, and uh, hopefully a Fiddleman interchange get across the line. We have a look at the Adelaide Crows, and uh, Riley comes in. Cook, Walker, a danger field, averaging 90 super coach points. Kicked six goals last week. Was on fire. Adelaide normally match up quite well against Collingwood, but I reckon after last week's loss, the Pies will uh, have a little bit of fire in their belly and they'll get across Adelaide. That's it, mate. Um, yeah, this weekend, both teams are playing for the Westpac uh, Cup. It's the second annual, annual year the Westpac Cup's been around, and this year we're uh, playing for the life-saving Victoria, and all proceeds from our football jumper that all the Collingwood players will be wearing will be sold and given to life-saving Victoria, which will be a fantastic effort on the Westpac behalf. Nice job. Yeah, I think Collingwood, uh, Collingwood will win, but um, Cloakie, you boys better put some time into Patrick Dangerfield because uh, and we didn't take him lightly. We know he's a, a great player, but he came up and kicked six against us last, uh, last weekend. He's, he's going to be a superstar. So it's his 50th game as well, so if you can shut him down, you can shut down Adelaide. Is, is, that, is, that, the young, is that the Dangerfield, the young boy from Melbourne, slung to the ground, got three weeks for? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, he'd be a real worry, that lad. So, he, nearly, he nearly didn't play with concussion. He, no. he ended up playing and coming out and kicking six. So. Battle of the birds, Gary. I think the uh, Maggies will peck the eyes out of the crows. <laughs> I'm with you, Samuel. I Thanks, think Collingwood yes. will win. They've got a very, very good coach who's a lateral thinker, Jim. Wow. Yes. And uh, yes. we like him because he looks at things in a, in a different way. Diverse. Yes. He's got a diverse outlook. And uh, we particularly like his press conferences. I'm not going to say anything more. just want you to sit back and Figure make... this out. Make, yeah, make of this what you will. Uh, running from the ground to the coach's box is a um, piece of bread. Three weeks ago, it looked like Someone lost a, an ear. Today it looked like someone lost a finger. That's it, the bread's still there. It's still up on the... So the, I'll clearly clear our... Uh, uh, brush our... Or sweep our, our stairs internally. <laughs> it's gold. That is gold. Right. If that doesn't go around the world... Yeah. Trev, what did you make of that? I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what you take of it, really. It's a bit of a, well, bit of a mess, really. It's something yeah. I would say, really. <laughs> few people who have got the mental capacity to go there and try and work it out, Jim. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, go head-to-head head with the great Mick. Only one man on this panel that could do yeah. that. So we got the fourth, the, the fourth, <laughs> oh, yeah. the old enforcer. <laughs> uh, Mick goes on a walk, which uh, yeah. around the uh, Fitzroy Gardens most yeah. mornings. Well, don't say which gardens, because he'll right. be inundated by okay. Fitzroy Scary. North Gardens goes yeah. down into yeah. the park. Somewhere. Somewhere, Could, gee, you uh, just sprung him. Yeah. He just walked. Botanical garden. Any garden. Yeah, botanical garden. So we said, right, oh, Samuel, go down there and get to the bottom of that. She was cold. <laughs> early, <laughs> so was. early, uh, sorry, midweek, he, uh, old Foss got out of bed. It was about four degrees. Have a look Foss. at the get-up that the Foss is wearing. That's another thing that you can sort out. And then have a listen to here, Mick. This is, uh, this is a different Mick Malthouse. When you run down from the coach's box onto the ground, it's about seven, six or seven flights of stairs. <laughs> So someone had a bad, one of the coaches had a bad day, clearly um, one of the crusts was dropped yeah. part way down at quarter time. I've listened to that. Five, I, or, six, five or six weeks ago. Six I've listened to your press conference several times. That was the, is gold. I reckon it'll go around the world. I no, have I, not understood a word of it, no, but I I'm here. It does anyway, uh, in your thinking period when you're running from the coaches box to the ground, I, I thought that bit of bread, I got it wrong because three weeks later I thought someone's actually lost a finger. It looked like someone's <laughs> finger had been cut off. I did it. And three weeks later I thought that bit of bread that's now looked like a finger is no longer a finger. It looks like someone's ear had been chewed off. He had been on medication previous to that, had you So mentioned? I thought the, the tr the, clearly the, uh, the cleaner is very consistent. I see. So it was about the uh, standard of cleaning at no, the MCG. Well, it wasn't really. It was just that I just, it, I just had this thing. Was it, why did that piece of bread finger come here attract my attention so much when I'm supposed to be thinking about football? So, I, well, I uh, think that's cleared it up. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. So <laughs> I hope I've, I hope I've explained that better to you. <laughs> I, hope now, I hope now that you're, you're, you're all over it. So I hope I'm, I'm, we're all across it, and so is everyone watching. And that's yeah. that's the explanation. So don't write it anymore. You, you've heard him what he said. Yeah. That's cleared it up. <laughs> Well, do you still get it? No. I've watched that 
twice yeah, now. Really? I listened to his first explanation. What's it mean? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. And he's a marvellous man he and he is, is the best. He is. I have no idea it was still what he's talking about. Probably well, why he's a genius. See, it's probably why. He that's works right. on a different plane. Four degrees, Foss has got a polo <laughs> shirt on and that is how he rolls. Doesn't matter how cold it gets. Um, what we did... Uh, Gary, is we let this vision roll on a little bit and, and Sam and Mick walked on a little bit and what we found out... Not was at the Fitzroy Gardens. No, no it wasn't there. No, elsewhere. Oh, God, no. uh, what we found out was that, that Mick actually is a, a follower of modern culture and he knew exactly what's been happening in the Fosses' life, especially uh, with some planking business. Have a look at this. You can, see? Oh! How are you going to go back bit, bit further? Sam, I've got to put my hands by my side. Go on in. It's, it's just... That's I am planking. You've got to say I am planking. That's a plank. That, that is planking. That's a bit safer than we're... I can't get down, Mick. Yeah, it's, it's a bit safer than 40, 40 floors up. <laughs> <laughs> He's making me go mad. <laughs> oh, mate, making me go mad. Jeez. <laughs> There's some... Um... And a mixed beautiful wife, Nanette, in the background, yeah. so she got to see you plank as well. She's very keen to be on camera, Nanette, yeah. yeah. What are you doing planking, by the way? Well, Through the week you did some planking, which I personally thought was ridiculous and irresponsible. What, what are you doing? This well, is, I'll tell you what I was well, doing. This, this is, this is this nothing was short nothing of ridiculous. To... This was 40 stories up and you decide to do that. You, you're, a, you're an impressionable... You, you make big impressions on people. What sort of uh, example are you setting? For Gary, this? this wasn't for the television, and this oh, wasn't... Oh, really? This oh, was, no, this was for the radio station I work for. Fall, 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 fall. No, no, just kidding, no. Uh, could not. I just also say, Gary... Well, hang I, on. Do you not think that was irresponsible? Of course it was irresponsible. Well, that was the point. Do you have to be told you're irresponsible to know you're irresponsible? <laughs> That's the point. We are told every minute of the day we live our lives... Don't drive quickly in the no, rain. No. Don't smoke cigarettes. Let's put them in green well, packets. Don't, don't do you have to, have, to have it hammered into why, your brain? Why did you do that? It was my reverse psychology way of starting a safety no, campaign. It was stupid. It was stupid. <laughs> could, okay, could I say this, Gary? What? You're um, sounding like Mick. That uh, makes as much <laughs> sense as his yeah. bread. Well, he has is, he is infiltrated the back of my brain. Could I say this, Gary? Um, I, I think there'll be a small spike in the audience viewing tonight because a current affair, which I think is on our station, isn't it? Yes. They did a terrific uh, service for us. They uh, gave us a bit of a boost. They showed all the highlights on one of their shows during the week. Uh, uh, me painting my face black, which they said was a disgrace, but they showed it. Uh, me, uh, Shane, pulling my pants down, which they said was a disgrace, but they showed it again. Uh, <laughs> Me uh, dressing up Caroline Wilson as a mannequin, which they said it was a disgrace, but they showed it again. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did something else. So right. me throwing a pie in Davy Schwartz's face, right. which they said was really irresponsible. Yes. And then what? they showed that. Right. Uh, you know, said it was absolute disgrace. It I was, agree. Uh, it was uh, Irrespo dangerous, irresponsible, irresponsible yeah. stupid thing to I do. Agree. But showed it. And of course, uh, I came down, and uh, Channel Seven had got the vision. Not mm. that. We did it for the television. And I said, how did you go? Did you get it? And they said, no, we missed it. We were on the other side of the building. So I said, well, I'll do it again for you. No. So they still, st oh, well. they still stayed there in the helicopter. And then they asked me uh, late in the evening, this is a current affair, to come on and discuss it. Now, uh, this is late in the early evening. Right. And I said, uh, well, I'm sorry, I had a dinner engagement. So Tracy, lovely girl, Tracy mm -hmm. Grimshaw, who she was is. hosting uh, yes. Current Affair, she said, and Sam Newman couldn't come in because he said that he had a dinner engagement. Did she he? seemed to be mystified by the fact that yeah. I had a dinner engagement well, you, early in the evening. Maybe it's now. because she mm. hasn't had one for a oh, while. No, 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 all it, all, oh, all they did, on, Foss. All they they did is take the vision from National 9 News News, which who didn't run it, yeah. and made a whole feature out of it, giving me a nice baggie. Well, never and mind. you deserved it too. Yeah, well, I, I could have told them that absolute. before they wasted some little... Plankers are wankers. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You've been doing a lot of yeah, planking lately. Totally agree. All right, we're going to move on from planking and head to the SCG on Sunday. The uh, Swannies take on the Hawks. And they don't lose too many at the SCG in the Swannies. Beaten the Hawks the last four times they played there. CB, Malcheski, Meredith and Johnson. Come in. Kennedy is a fine player, for, speaking of former Hawks. Uh, Gordon is the only one out of the side, a big squad at the moment. Hawthorne sitting pretty, fifth position on the ladder. 
And as you heard before from Gary, suckling uh, lots of points there from last week, Ladson, Young, Rioli, show and makers, Bailey is a great story, and please, Clarko, uh, pick J- uh, Jordan Lyle. I've never known a man to be in an emergency so many times in my life, and uh, his <laughs> mum and dad are good friends of mine. Max Get him Bailey's in. Bailey's getting a game, I'm not sure he is. <laughs> he was, uh, Shane, what do you uh, think? I think the Hawks will win. Yeah! Yeah, they've the Hawks as well. They're fantastic at the moment. Last week's game was out of this world. They played fantastic last three quarters. You're You're on, on the Forest 100th uh, this week. I'm just looking forward to the first contest between him and Jordan Lewis after that big uh, dust-up in Los Angeles last year. So Ooh. that should be good. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Sydney. Samuel? No, I'm going for it. Why don't you go and plank off the 40th story? Uh, I mean, I can build people scared on the heights. football ground as well as you can, mate, but I'd like to see you get up there I'm and do it. I'm scared of heights. Hey? I'm scared of heights. He's not stupid enough. It's mind over matter, mate. If, you're not, <laughs> if you don't think it's dangerous, it's not dangerous. Right. Gary? I, too, am going for the horse. I'm pretty yeah. close. We are going to take a break, oh, but we don't want yes. you to go away, because boxing Ooh. royalty is about to join us. Danny Green and Antonio Tarver up next. the footy show. Now it's time for Almost Footy Legends. Campbell Brown is going to get it underway. Away we go, mate. Yeah, first we've got Henley versus Camden. Uh, Henley player takes a massive grab. Here it is. Big long kick coming in. And you beauty. Oh, very nice. And just a tip, next time you're filming, see if you can actually get it in focus. It comes out much better that way. Lovington taking on Wangarana. He gets the ball, runs in the goal and puts it through. What? It's a behind. Oh, no. What have I done? I thought it was a goal and I've kicked it through the behinds. Oh, my goodness me. And have a look at this. This is a mark. He goes back. The siren goes. They're five points down. There's no wind. He said, I'm going to talk this. He kicks this from 75 metres. And have a look at this. Go to win the match. It's a great final. Oh, how good is that? So what are we going to do? We're going to do number one, which was the very nice mark without the focus. We're going to go number two, which was kicking it behind. Oh, yeah. oh we're going to go number three at 75 minutes. Congratulations, Claude Rigney. You have won this. Thanks to Home Timber and Hardware, our weekly winner takes home $1,000, while our two runners-up receive $500 gift cards to spend at Home Timber and Hardware, the proper hardware store. At the end of the year, our runner-up pockets $20,000 cash thanks to Deep Heat. With a smell of victory, Deep Heat provides fast temporary relief from muscle aches and strains. Deep Heat, the stuff of legends. While our major prize winner drives away in the new Nissan Navara STX 550 with a powerful 170 kilowatt V6 turbo diesel engine, 3,000 kilogram brake towing capacity, seven speed automatic transmission, six airbags and vehicle dynamic control, the Nissan Navara STX 550 is Australia's most powerful trading. Footy, get your entries in now. Almost three legends, Tube Box 9, Melbourne Victoria 3001, or go to the website footyshow.com.au to upload a video. Right, next game, big guests coming up. West Coast take on the Western Bulldogs at Bassett Stadium Sunday. The Eagles in very good form, seventh on the ladder, four wins, three losses. Rolled Freo by 33 points last week, looking very good indeed. Kennedy kicked three, Lacroix two, Kerr, Strike, and Emily come in. Of course, Kerr and Emily. Late withdrawals from last week's side. They take on the Western Bulldogs. We yeah. also found a little bit of form. Roll Richmond by 35 points. 11th on the ladder. Got some work to do. Gilby kicked six and Minson kicked four. Williams back. Higgins, Wood, Wallace and Hall. All very good ins. Cooney out for, uh, with a knee and Hill has been omitted. Very quick tips, please, boys. Uh, I think West Coast at home. Yeah, going West Coast as well. Yeah, Rally. West Coast in very good form. I'm going to stick with them. I'm sticking with the West Coast Eagles too, Jim Boy, but now we're getting very well, excited. Well, I'll tell you what. What we have is boxing royalty in the house. And uh, we know Danny Green. He's been a great friend of ours. He is, of course, the reigning world cruiserweight champ. And I want you to get him out and smack him together as hard as you can for our great friend, Danny Green.
And sitting next to uh, Greeny is Antonio Tava. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this man. Four times he has been a world champion. The first man ever to knock out Roy Jones Jr., who we saw Greeny fight recently, of course. This man's heading to the Boxing Hall of Fame. We're going to talk about some of the acting he's done as well, but when it comes to the square circle, there are a few better than Antonio Tava's with us. <laughs> Now, Greeny, we've, we've spoken to you about some of your fights in the past and we've been uh, very, very confident that things are going to go well. This bloke's a four-time world champ and he's got a bit of weight on you and he's got a full trick bag. Yeah, it's a very difficult fight, Jimmy. It's, uh, it's a 50-50 fight. I guess, um, you know, I'm the, I'm the reigning champion and, uh, you know, it's probably unlikely for... It's an unlikely thing that he's coming in again as the challenger, so it's an unusual thing for Antonio. But, look, he's a superstar of boxing. I've got a world of respect for the, for the guy and... Uh, he's achieved some phenomenal things in the sport, and for me, <clears throat> excuse me, to be victorious against Antonio Tava on July 20, it'll be a massive uh, feather in my cap. And you know, we've been on this promo tour for quite some time now. We've been spending, uh, you know, a couple of uh, you know occasions together. And the uh, <laughs> he's a guy that he's, he's hard to dislike because he's a professional inside and outside the ring, and he, he's, he's, his credentials are impeccable. But the longer I spend with him, the more I want to crack him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Antonio, you've got to drop some weight. <laughs> you got to drop some weight to see uh, our man in the ring, of course. And uh, how's that going to go? Because you've you fought a lot heavier. Now you got to come down to Greeny's weight. Well, I don't think it'll be a problem. You know, uh, I think 200 pounds would be my most comfortable weight. Uh, I have my speed, I have my agility, and I also have my power. And you know, all my opponents want to crack me, but you know, it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Antonio, can I ask you about your acting career? Because uh, you're going to have your hands full with our man. Don't worry about that. But you've also dabbled uh, from, in the acting uh, world with a starring role in Rocky Balboa, which was the last of one of the most famous uh, movie franchises of all time. Just talk us through this. How did this all fit in uh, to your boxing schedule? Oh, that was something I, I did, man. Uh, I was on my way to training camp, and I got a phone call from Sylvester Stallone, of all people, and he asked me how would I like to, you know, play alongside him in the next Rocky movie. I said, where do I sign up? You know, it's one of those things that, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity. And as a youngster, you know, I, I came up, you know, idolizing Rocky. I'm, I ate the raw eggs and all that stuff, <laughs> one hand push-ups and almost died from the eggs, but we made it through. Uh, it was a, a feel good thing. I never thought in a million years that I would be in Hollywood, playing alongside the great Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. So it was one of those things. Dream well, come true. Antonio, you may think that Rocky's got a, uh, a, a, a jaw of steel, but he's got nothing on our man, the green machine. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> he, this is going to be a rumble in uh, Sydney in July. Now, I want to show you both of you gentlemen this. I think Greeny's seen a bit of this vision, but this is a show that's had some uh, punching over Fierce the journey. Fierce punches. <laughs> Just have a look at some of these. <laughs> Anthony, the man Mundine, of course. That's Samuel overseas in Munich. That's Jim throwing a lily, lily livered stuff. Oh, Here a, oh, oh, a couple of chicks in Fremantle. That one rocked the fossil. Uh, that's Shane Crawford. This is Mel Brown, the father of Campbell, who's oh, sitting no. up here on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> he liked to throw a few in his day. So. Greeny, you're very familiar with the AFL code. You're a great uh, lover of, of AFL footy, of course. But, Antonio, that's your first sort of look at AFL footy. Have you, have you been to a game before? Uh, never. I mean, I've watched it lately since I've been over here, and that's like everything's on TV. The only thing on TV. But uh, it looks interesting, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, we'd like to introduce you right now, Antonio, to uh, our main man. He may be getting on in years, but don't worry. Weighing in at an even 230 pounds... The Cario Clubber, John Sammy Newman! Oh, no. He can't get his jumper. <laughs> oh, no. Well, this, 
Hey, Greeny, what do you think, mate? 65 you... years of age, you're still looking all right. It's not Hutchie he's hanging not up there, is it? not in bad nick at all there, mate. Hey? He's not in bad nick at all. Let's have a look and tell me whether he's got, got anything here. Oh, I love it. What do you think? What do you think, Gaz? Now, listen, well, come over Again, here. Again, I'm a bit high, no hitting below the belt. <laughs> no, no, we don't need a camel. Now, listen, we've got... <laughs> We've got the ring over here. Now, you, you, you fancy yourself every time we have a boxing personality Antonio, on... Antonio, what do you think? Seriously, son. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You know what? <laughs> what? You can, you can use a little trimming up. <laughs> <laughs> might tempted to go and knock some smugness off his face. <laughs> Danny and Antonio, our, our great man here, Samuel, was very keen to get in the, he in was. the ring, wasn't he? He but wanted a piece of Antonio. Put bloody blood behind our ear. <laughs> but look, like, we want you to have a look at this vision here. This is the last time he got oh, in the ring. Oh, not me again. This was with a girl, a lady by the name of Sharon Anyos. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> This is back when we did a magnificent show. <laughs> Any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. And, and Sharon punched, punched the little suitcase. He did too. So we don't... We made an executive decision, yes. haven't we? We don't we want him. Samuel to get in the ring at all, and I think that's a wise move, Danny. So I'd be happy to it's take... a very good move, Sammy. Stay where you are, mate. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm on your team, mate. Out of all the punches I saw up there on the replays, my favourite's always going to be that jab to the face in Germany is a beauty. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> oh, I'd done a hamstring, mate. I was only on one leg there. I couldn't balance. I'd be happy to take any shot within reason that you boys would like to lay on me. I could... <laughs> <laughs> Why well, you contemplate that? We, we we have got this ring up here, and we're not going to put Sam in it. But we oh, well, you don't do that again, please. <laughs> oh, I have to clip you otherwise. You, you I don't want to clip. What? <laughs> <laughs> I said that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's choreographing yeah, the fight. Yeah. But anyway, now, now uh, we've made an executive decision. Yes, we, we've got the ring. We, got, the we want Shane Crawford to go up and come on, Shane. <laughs> We say this, Antonio, because backstage he was talking trash about you. He, reckon, he, okay? he reckons you're an actor and an actor only and that you don't what? fight real oh, stuff. Oh, I did on. not. I did not. I said C-grade actor. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't. I didn't say a thing. I'm not getting in that bloody me. Yes, you are. <laughs> Antonio, go against me. would you like to get a piece of our man? Shit. Yeah. 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 Yes, tip down, give us a look at you, Antonio. Oh. We are going to go to a break. After the break, I can tell you right now, Antonio the Magic Man Tava and Shane Big Teeth Crawford coming up next on the footy show. <laughs> St Kilda. It's been a great ride over the last few years, but is the carnival over? Luna Park's getting a renovation. Maybe they need one too. Let's go and find out. The Saints, are they done for 2011? No, I don't think so. Nothing they can do. How do you get it back? They play like my foot. Like your food? <laughs> yeah, my foot. Oh, your foot. Yeah, they just need to pull their finger out of their bum and get their arse in the gear and go for it. <laughs> Well, we always look to Revo, you know, like our, our dear, dearly beloved Revo. But, you know, he can't carry a team by Ooh. himself. Start playing hurling. Move to Ireland. <laughs> play a real sport. Oh, play hurling. Hurling. Hurling, yeah. Hurling over here is when you throw up. Ah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. They need to play like they were playing last year. Yep. And just bring in some more heart in the game. What do you think the St Kilda players need to get their mojo back? Mmm... Massage? Yeah, massage and yeah, like a full body massage is good for them. Yeah, I think so. Heart. Yeah, that's what they need. Yes. Yeah. Did you know there was a player at Adelaide called Ben Hart and yeah. his brother was Juf? Yeah. Juf Hart. <laughs> True. True. I spoke to Sam Newman in Street Talk once before, he never put me on. He didn't? Oh, we'll put you on. We'll put you on. If you look closely, 
It's a Gary Lyon dog look-alike. <laughs> Hello. He's been planking a lot lately. Does he? Yeah. Do you know what <laughs> planking boost? is? Yeah. yeah. Should plank now for the chair. Yeah, go on, give us a plank. You, I've got to go back a bit further. Yeah, just hold it there. That's it. Tense those tight butt muscles of yours. Robert Walls. We're looking in the back seat of his car. We didn't realise it was his car. And there's a dog that actually looks like Gary Lyon. Where did you get your Gary Lyon dog from? I've had him for 12 months. His name's Gus, and he's a boxer. And is it true that you wanted to get the dog because it looked a lot like Gary Lyon? Well, I thought there were some similarities <laughs> around the eyebrows. <laughs> so when do I get full body massage? When? Uh, whenever you would like. <laughs> Ross Lyon's been very honest with the players. Yeah. If you've got to be honest with yourself, what do you need to improve? Me personally? Yeah. Everything. Everything? Or some examples? Uh, I don't know. I have to learn uh, the chart woman a bit better than I do. This is Archie, and this is another dog that looks like Gary Lyon. Have a look at him. It is the ugliest dog you're ever going to see. Look down that camera and give him a motivational talk. Go, Nick. Get the ball and kick the goal. Just practice. Boys, we love you. We're behind you all the way and you can get your mojo back. Hit them hard. F***ing hard. <laughs> get them, boys. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. He said, oh, OK. That's yeah, young, just a little bit hard, but that's all right. There, I'd certainly yeah. play well now. What about kissing? Are you a good kisser? Are you passionate? Absolutely. I think oh. they should de-stress, and there's only one way to do it. <laughs> really? What do you do? You should have hot, passionate sex. Oh, you, you're a very good kisser. You're a great cuddler. What else are you good at? I'm good in bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll never guess what. There's more dogs that look like Gary. There's Gary. And there's Gary's girlfriend. Do you have a name for your member? I used to, but uh, that's a long time ago. Oh, wh what do you used to call it? <laughs> What's its name? The Beast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Ross Lyon and the St Kilda Boys would love this. Very good. Very good. My mojo's coming back. My mojo's coming back. In about expected to last no longer than 60 seconds, <laughs> we have fighting out of the blue corner from Orlando, Florida, the undefeated, undisputed, weighing an even 210 pounds, Antonio Magic Montalva! <laughs> In our red corner, 163 centimetres, 172 pounds, Hi. never fought, never won, out of Brighton, Victoria, Shane, expecting pain, Crawford! <laughs> and now I'd like to hand you over to the man who'll be keeping this bout clean, Harry Gary Lyon! All right, boys, come together. Where's this guy? Get going, huh? Thank you. Right, come together. Oh, all right. What I want from you is a clean fight, all right? Don't go silly. This man's about to fight for a world championship. What I want from you, Antonio, is to punch him hard, really, really hard in the head. Oh. Oh. Second down, Brownie. Let's go. Here we go. 60 minutes here. Here we 60 go. Second. This is 60 second now. Here we go. Shane Crawford fancies himself. Oh, oh, oh nice right. Nice right oh, from Antonio. Oh, 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 no. oh, 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 he's got him. Back off him. He's got him. He did. He, he clicked him a nice right. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Break him open. Break. Break him open. Oh, it's, it's tight at the moment. I score it evenly, Dan. Oh, oh, oh. Right. 20 up. seconds, 20 seconds to go. Break it up, break it up. <laughs> 20 seconds left in the bout. Yeah. Give me one, Antonio. Give me one of the nose. Break. 10 seconds to go. The fight's even. Give me one. Give me one, Antonio. Give me one. Fight now. Yeah. Seconds out.
Leave my boy alone, mate. Come here, come here, boy. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Bring it up. Bring it up. Look at Green, he's got it. Oh, no. The finish has gone down. He's fallen out of the ring. Oh, oh no. All sorts of mayhem. Foss, oh, you're all right down there. Foss. Oh, great. Check him down. Foss has just fallen off the ring. Foss. Oh no, good. Oh no, he's caught one. Shane's caught one. He's oh, bleeding no. through the mouth. Foss, you all right? In a close decision. Oh. It, was a, it was a split decision. Uh, the winner, two to one. Antonio oh, hey, the Magic Man. Oh, hey. Hey, well, over to you, Jim. I'll tell you what, boys, come in. This is going to be enormous. July 20, Sydney Entertainment Centre, Greeny. It's going to be the fight of your life. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, have you ever seen anything like that in the ring? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Were you concerned at any stage that he was going to punch you? No, I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> uh, Jim, Jim, what's happened to the fossil? Oh, no. The foss fell clean <laughs> off the six foot high. He's fallen on his head, Greeny. Oh. There he is. <laughs> hey, mate, this is going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. I just want to, you know, thank, uh, thank the footy show and, and, you know, Gaz and the fossil and you, Jimmy and Gary and all the boys. Just want to say thank you very much. Always the footy shows, you know, been rock solid to me. Really appreciate the support, guys. Antonio really. Tava, Danny Green, getting it on in July. It'll be on uh, Fox Tell, of July course. 20, be on main event, be on Fox Tell. You can get oh. your tickets from Ticketmaster now, so it's on sale at uh, the Entertainment Centre July 20, and Crawford's gone absolutely nuts. We're <laughs> going to a break. Back to wrap up after this. Stick around. Crawford. He got sat back on his heels a couple of times. <laughs> we really enjoyed that one, Brownie. He did wear a couple. We want to thank Antonio and also Danny Green for coming in and oh, being a good sport, Antonio. Yeah. What a fun. Good on you, boys. I'm going to get through the next game because Samuel's gone missing. We're not sure where he is, so hopefully he'll be back uh, very shortly. But let's do the last game quickly. Brisbane take on North Melbourne. Come on, come on. The, uh, at the Gabba, the Brisbane Lions yet to have a win. Went down to the Bombers by 36 points. John O'Brown back. What an in that is. Matt Austin and Jay Green, Drummer McGrath and Harwood out for the North Melbourne Footy Club. Coming off a very nice victory over Melbourne by 41 points. Aaron Edwards returned to form. Six goals. Brent Harvey was sensational with three. Delaney, a new boy, recruited from Geelong, 21 years of age. Pick 25 in the 09 rookie draft has been selected to debut along with Ben Cunnington. Well done to the Lions. John O'Brown back. Campbell, uh, up there, is that going to make a difference? It's going to be huge for them. They've been playing some pretty good footy, um, just haven't got a win just yet. But I think uh, with Jonathan Brown back, spiritual leader, they'll uh, get him across the line. Oh, cloaky. Yeah, go on the same with Brownie. Oh. With Brownie back, it's massive for them, so I'm going with the uh, Lions. Shane, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Very fresh. You caught one? Uh, a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Is he all right? <laughs> I think he's all right, mate. You OK? Yeah, no, he's good. Well, who are you tipping? I don't know. Brisbane? Brisbane. All right, right. Samuel, Brisbane yeah. and North, how are you? Oh, 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 no, I'm great, what Gary. What happened, mate? Uh, yeah, you want to try and fall from the top rope onto the concrete floor, Gary, and land on your head. Well, that's, that's what you get uh, from uh, hitting well, me from behind. trying to get out of his way. Did he belt you? Well, well, he, he sort of belted me, and then I fell through the ropes and then fell on. But I'm not complaining. I don't actually think I'm complaining. I've got a bit of cartilage trouble in my ribs. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, all seriousness, Jonathan Brown, very gutsy effort, yep. and we take our hat if we wear a hat. We take it off to him. We do. But, Jim. Yes. I went and made a sudden movement there, Gary. Ooh. Jim, I think, I th actually think the kangaroos will beat the Brisbane Lions. Good on there. you, Foss. Gary? I'm, uh, I think the, the uh, Brisbane Lions, Jimmy, I'm sorry. Oh, I've had enough of you. Might open their you account. Tipped. I you haven't in, tipped us all year. I'm in shocking tipping. There's a cold you. front come between you and I. Now, uh, Collingwood Premiership players, by the way, are appearing at Crazy John's Chadston next Wednesday night from 6pm. Sworn to secrecy as to who they are, Trev, but there's going to be plenty of them. Crazyjohns.com.au forward slash Chadston for all the details. Catch up with some of the biggest stars in the game. Uh, it's been a very, very big night. We thank you all for coming along and watching. Shane, I hope you recover OK. Trev and Brownie, good luck on the weekend, boys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Team. See you next Thursday night. Good night.